All right, and here's a video review for Make Toys MTRM08 Despertron, their masterpiece scaled Megatron. You can see here he is in gun mode. Now, there's not really a lot uh, to talk about here in gun mode. He's a gun. Uh, he does have a bit of a thick grip due to how he transforms, uh, so it's a little... Don't know what that was. Um, got, you kind of got to stretch your hand out to hold... Uh, you know, really hold him like a gun. This triggers on a spring and it works. Um, so like I said, a very large grip compared to the rest of the gun, uh, more so than you would normally see on a Walther. But again, all, all, all of the Masterpiece Megatrons, and I talked a little bit about this on Twitter, but all the Masterpiece Megatrons are a little oversized in gun mode just because you kind of have to to make it, uh, uh, a, you know, make the robot scale properly. Um, a lot of panel lines, but no more so really on this side than most of the other ones. Um, now on this side, he's got a little bit of a... He's got the P38 molding up here. Um, and the barrel, there's a screw hole up here, which isn't much of a bother. Uh, it's just a pick little thing. Uh, but he's got this chunk right here that allows this piece to slide in robot mode. Um, and it's a little bollocks here in... Uh, in gun mode. But yeah, uh, like I said, the sight on this one, I, I feel it's a little longer and skinnier, especially here in the front. I feel like if this were as wide as this piece, it would look a little bit better to me. That's a personal thing, but uh, I'd, I'd, like, I'd like for this to be a little shorter and a little bulkier, more like DX9s. But yeah, so there he is in gun mode. And he's actually pretty clever to transform him into robot mode. So we'll go ahead, first thing we're going to do is we'll slide this off just the back like that. It just pegs on here, just slides right off the back. And then we'll start, I'm trying to remember exactly where we want to start here. We're gonna, this was this part's fun. You take this piece, slide it all the way forward over to this side like this, and then open this panel up here to reveal his head. And his head is a little bit of a pain to get out because of how it fits in there. Because his helmet wants to get caught, and he can't really pull on his helmet because of the way it comes off for uh, the face swapping gimmick. So you kind of have to wiggle it out and about. But once you get that out, you're pretty you're, you're pretty solid for the rest of the transformation. So flip his head out, close this panel back up. But then you can have Megatron with his with a head on his gun mode. <laughs> You pop the, uh, just pull the barrel off of this tab right here. Bring this whole panel out. Pop it. Break, pop this panel off. And these are going to fold up. This rotates around. And fold those up right there onto the back. Rotate his head the proper way. Slide this over. Unpeg the trigger guard here from the back of the leg pieces. Fold that up. We'll get to that in a minute. Come around on the front, and we'll go ahead and pop this whole upper assembly off. Pull this panel out, swing this around to the side, and fold this piece back. You can see this piece is going to fold up here. Uh, here in a minute, I'm going to fold this piece out to the side. You lift this up, untab this from here, and now that his head's out of the way, this whole thing slides on a rail uh, right up in here to over here. And while we've got this up, you take this, hold the trigger down, fold this, fold, rotate that around like that, and then this whole assembly rotates up and through here, and then this the trigger goes right up in there, and then this whole assembly snaps down like that, and then this snaps down on top of that, and now you can see where the upper body of the robot's going. To finish up the legs here first. So this panel folded back, take this panel, same thing on this side, fold that back. This piece right here slides down into what will become the leg. Untab these two sides here. Uh, swing these panels out. Valkyrie, get off of there. Hey, tape is not for you to eat. Oh, she got the tape. She got the masking tape. <laughs> fold these up. Pull this whole assembly up into the side. 
and then kind of bring this around, fold this panel down here. And then right here, this panel folds up, lift this middle section up. That's gonna lift straight up. This panel is gonna come around to the side and this is gonna fold down. And then this is gonna fold down to form, you can see now what is now the front of the waist. And then we can go ahead and snap this into place here. And then this panel right here comes around to the side. Actually, I want to take this little thing that allowed this red tab went in here for gun mode. This little piece folds into the side like that. This panel comes around to form his hip panel. These little, these little grooves right here to split these panels on the bottom of the leg. So you pop those out and pop them off of here. And on this side, you just pull this panel up, untab it, and slide it forward, peg it in right there. This panel comes back like this, and then the rear part of the panel comes forward like that. And then you separate the legs, um, extend them down here, just like that. This panel, that uh, the, this, is, this tabs into the back here to allow them to line up properly in the handle mode. But this little panel folds up and flips up and folds into the back of the leg. This panel comes in, you fold up the uh, little grip piece here, and fold that in here under the leg. Close that up. And then you rotate the legs there at the thigh. And then the feet themselves come down. And then you flip out, you take the toe, slide the toe out to the front, flip out the rear, and he's got some little rubber pads here to help him grip and stand, which is nice. You can extend the toe, pull that down, pull that down. And then on the back, you take these, these parts of the panel, just kind of fold them in onto his back there, and the whole lower half is done. And up here on the upper body, let's see the tone down some of the brightness there so we can see what's going on up here. Bring the arm out. This panel lifts up. Rotate it down like this. Bring the arm down. This panel comes around on this hinge. And you can see how that tabs in here. To form his arm. And then on the back, there's a little flip this up. And that gives him the little trigger guard on this arm. Rotate this forward. Open this up. This panel right here. Or rotate the hammer around. Lift this up. And then his fist rotates up and around. Close that back up. Close up the arm. There we go. Rotate his fist. One arm done. And you pretty much do the same thing over here. You come out, uh, untab this piece, which will cover up the slide for the uh, arm cannon. Bring the arm back, rotate it down. This panel folds down to fill in the uh, upper arm. And before you before you flip this hand out, I'm going to go ahead and show this off now because um, it's easier than flipping the hand back in. Uh, but he does come with a mason chain. And you see this little tab, it just kind of slides right in there and over this tab so you can give him his mason chain arm here. The chain's a little longer than I think it really needs to be. It's a pretty decently long chain, uh, but that's easy to fix. You, could, you can take any of these links out and shorten that chain if you wanted to give him a shorter little weapon there. This arm oh, flips out like this, flip out his fist. And then there's a couple little tabs that go into slots here when you close it back up. Close up the arm. <clears throat> and then this piece right here, like I said, this rotates and then slides down on this, does not sit as high on the robot mode. Now you can have it sit over here like this, where you don't see the screw hole, but it does kind of show up there under his armpit. You can rotate it onto his back, which is nice, but it does rotate that screw hole into view from the front. It would have been nice to have like a little screw plug or something for that side of the robot mode. Let me take the uh, arm cannon and just slide it on here from the back. 
and there he is. I'll flip up this trigger as well. Or I guess the little hammer, it does really, the hammer, not the trigger. And there he is in robot mode. Let's get them all in there. The legs are a little thick from the front, but uh, they look great from the side. So like I said, uh, the DX9 had thinner legs on the front, but they were really thick from the side. But from the side, I mean, look at that. Look at that profile. That's really well done. And even from the back, it's very clean. Just a nice little, nicely done figure. Um, there are some things I like about DX9 more. There are some things I like about this more. Um, oh, also, I forgot to pull this up. This panel comes out here and comes up like this. And then uh, this panel right here, this underside panel flips out. And that's the line that people were complaining about. You can leave it flat like I just had it and then you don't have that issue. Um, some people don't like this line and I think I found in a lot of pictures it's because this is folded down, not pushed all the way up. It's still there, but, uh, but yeah, it's not as big of a deal in hand as some pictures made it look. And like I said, if you want, you can flip that down, leave this panel down, and you've got a little bit of a gap up here, but you don't have the line on the chest. It's entirely up to you how you want to do that. But officially, we're going to flip this up. Oh, come here, you. There we go. Yeah, slid across. But yeah, everything locks in place pretty securely. The right knee is on mine, on this one, is, is sliding down into the leg a little bit more than uh, without much force. And I thought there was, and there's, there's nothing I can see to tighten on this. There's a couple little screws here under the plastic, or maybe that's even a pin that you might be able to do. You might be able to tighten the screws here, but I haven't found anything that really works super effectively. It's not bad, but if you, if you start fiddling with it and posing it a lot, it does kind of start to sink into that right knee. The left knee doesn't slips a little bit, but oh, whoops, not as far because uh, of the uh, the grip piece hiding here inside there. But yeah, really poseable. He's got a ball joint up here on the neck, uh, ratcheting joints in both directions, and the arms do come out a little bit to give him more range of movement here. Let's focus up here on the upper body. <clears throat> Bicep swivel. Hinge elbow, wrist swivel. Uh, he's got MP style fingers with just three as one solid chunk and then an articulated index finger individual on the, on the hands. Like I said, especially in robot mode, I do wish this part of the fusion cannon was a little shorter, sat a little bit further up his arm, like on DX9s, but. Aside from that, it's a really nice, solid Megatron. Like I said, I feel, I feel like have these, had these parts been painted gray, the, the front parts of his shins, uh, it would do a lot to make his legs not look as thick. But uh, that side profile is just gorgeous. And even from the back, not a whole lot of extraneous stuff on him. Really nicely done. Um, and again, like I said, a screw hole cover here on... I'd, I'd be much less bothered by this slot if the screw hole cover was covered when it was folded around here to the front. But yeah, okay, so we were on the wrist swivel. He does have a waist swivel. A little scary, but it's there. Um, the, the panels can move out of the way. You can see his hips nicely ratchet side to side and front to back. He does have a thigh swivel, hinged knees that go all the way up like that. So decent amount of articulation there in the knee as well. Uh, he does have an ankle tilt and some front to back here in the foot hinges as well. Also, Josh was complaining that his feet don't come out from under his... But they do. They come forward from his pants. He doesn't look like Kevin Smith in jorts. Anyway. <laughs> what happened to you here? Why are you not folding in right? There we go. Oh, there we go. No. Well, I guess that's to be expected when you want to do something decent. There you go. I guess it is Michael Jackson's birthday today. Anyway. 
Now, he does come with three replacement faces. Um, I've got them here in a little baggie. Let me dump them out here. Um, he's got a smirking face, a kind of vicious laugh face, and an angry face. And how they swap out, and again, people who, so I know there are some people who didn't like some of the detail on the helmet here. Um, but the helmet comes off. This is how you swap the faces out. You pull the helmet off. It's a nicely sculpted helmet. The face just pops off. Oh, shush! And then uh, you can swap in a new face, plug the helmet back on. And the faces all look pretty good. Some of the, uh, the some of the first pictures of all the different faces made them look weird, and I agree on that. Um, but uh, in hand, and, and some of it may have just been because the helmet wasn't pushed all the way back down. Don't know, but a lot of the faces once you get them on, come on. There we go. Nice shiny red eyes. One haven't we done yet? We did the smirking face, so now just the angry face. Personally, I like the stock face, but uh, there's some good ones in there. So there's the angry snarling face. There we go. Push the helmet all the way down. Come on. But yeah, a really solid figure uh, that I dig. Like I said, nice lines. Um, sure, he's not as... I don't think he looks quite as animation accurate as like DX9s, for example. But uh, he's a really good, solid figure. Like I said, there are some things on DX9 I like a little better. I like the, the barrel, the, the back barrel on DX9 is a little better. I do like the shoulder cannon a little better. And I like the head sculpt on DX9s. For my MP shelf, like I said, uh, like I was explaining in some comments the other day, that uh, as a, uh, like this one absolutely deserves a place on a shelf. He's probably going to go on the shelf with Make Toys uh, Chrome Dome while uh, DX9 sits on my Masterpiece shelf. But still, a good solid Megatron. Nicely posable, very clean lines, uh, and intuitive transformation. I went, when I got him. I went from robot to gun and then back to robot without even peeking at the instructions. I only opened up the instructions earlier to make sure there wasn't anything I was missing, like maybe some lock for this knee or whatever. And I wasn't. I got it all. Great. <laughs> so uh, that, that's pretty cool. Um, quick comparison. Here he is with MP10. Oh, there's DX9 making a cameo appearance. But uh, there he is with... Uh... Actually, damn, seeing those, those, seeing those two together up close in this light. I mean, this one may end up actually on my MP shelf. But, uh, nicely proportioned. They look good together. Here he is with the other two uh, Megatrons. Here he is first with a Polyon. Focus. And here he is with DX9s. That was just a little case of some resin that fell. Nothing important. With DX9's Megatron. Personally, I think these two are the ones you really want to make a choice between. And it really comes down to personal preference. I think both of these guys are good, solid figures that do a lot of things right. And, do, and they each do a couple of things that I wish were better. So it really depends on what you want out of a Megatron figure. I think if you choose either one of these two, you're going to be happy with what you get. Now, he doesn't have a specific tab to hold Laserbeak on unless you have him facing forward. This little tab right here can kind of fit into Laserbeak's foot. Um, but I haven't found a specific place to attach him. Although, if you, kind of, if you set him on this way, uh, this little groove in his arm does tend to help support Laserbeak if you get his arm out in the right position. Ah. 
So you can do that. Uh, conversely, uh, something that I missed on DX9s that I will show off now very briefly is that he does actually have a little tab on his arm. I, w I was setting him on in between these pegs here, but he does have a little tab right here that will fit in Laserbeak's foot, foot grooves to allow him to attach to the arm. So just FYI there. And for the sake of other non-Optimus Prime MPs, give me one second here. Here he is with Masterpiece Soundwave. And I will back up. I'll let you get a good look at all these guys together. And there he is with Masterpiece Starscream and Soundwave. And he looks good with them too. So like I said, a good solid Megatron from Make Toys. Uh, like I said, I, I, I think if you get either him or Mitron, you're going to be happy with what you get. Again, it really comes down to what you want out of a uh, of a Megatron, and I think they're both good quality solid toys. Make Toys transformation is just wonderfully engineered. I really, I really do love just the act of transforming this guy more so than any of the other two Megatrons. Although DX9s is not bad either. But uh, that, that side profile shot as well as the uh, the cleanliness of the back is really, really nice. Um, also, I forgot to show off, he does have an ab crunch here. This joint here at the waist does allow him to ab crunch a little bit as well. But yeah, there he is. DX9 MTRM08 Despotron.